It's one of the main goals of the Lisbon Treaty, to create a common EU security and defense policy. This has revived calls for the creation of a single EU military headquarters, and with it, the long-standing disagreements among member states. The British perspective would be to, uh, to proceed with the greater enhanced cooperation on defense, um, but without any institutionalization, so no headquarters. The British have vehemently opposed the idea from the beginning, voicing their concerns loudly and clearly. Concern number one, a permanent structure would undermine the influence of NATO, headquartered in Brussels, they claim. And concern number two, this will all lead to the creation of a European army, arguments that many just don't buy. This is not a European Pentagon, by no means. We are not talking about um, a European army. Advocates of the idea, led by France, claim a single military command center would enable the European Union to conduct operations in a more efficient way. EU military missions are currently run from NATO or from one of five member states. This has certain um, uh, limitations because these are not permanent structures, you see. So we don't have a permanent structure for the time being. We have temporary structures. Press TV also asked the Germans about their position. I personally believe that uh, we will come to that point. I wouldn't dare to say when. Because right now we are busy in Europe with a lot of other topics and actually for the first time in the European process I'm a little bit concerned. European forces are not in the best of shape. Some experts claim and insist that this, rather than the political wrangling about headquarters, should be the focus. What we have now is 27 militaries, which are both bloated and inefficient. We have, I think, 2.4 million men and women under arms. And I think we have deployable at any given time a number that's in the tens of thousands. That's ridiculous. As for smaller and less powerful member states with no major military ambitions, the issue is much less significant. While the creation of the European External Action Service, which is priority number one for the European Union on the foreign policy front, has overshadowed the military aspect, experts say this may soon change. Press TV, Brussels.